This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey, what about our Comic Capers podcast? Don't yell at that nice young lady. Well, we did the Supergirl, we did the Batwoman... We did the flash. So, you know what that means. Legends! Hey, Ryder! Firestorm! How dare you! His name is Oliver Queen. For 12 years. No. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to Comic Capers, episode 67. We're getting closer, Lilith Hellfire. I am Phil. Joining me as always. Yeah. Is that your that's your name in this country, right? Right, right. Yeah. You know, I was gonna I was gonna say fan of uh, two episodes from now. Master Doom will suspend me with no pay. It's fine. <laughs> No pay. Well, who's <laughs> oh boy. So no, 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 no. I have to say this first. Arrow botched the Longbow Hunters. I will never forgive them for that. Oh, Even as great a season it has been, I still remember the bad times, homie. It's moving on. <laughs> they, just, they just didn't do anything with them. They like throwing them up, like oh, oh. And they really, they really destroyed Richard Dragon. And I'm like, bro. Ricardo Diaz. They even call him Richard Dragon for most of it. I know. Although he hung around. But it's like the Longbow Hunters. Seems like they were there for five minutes and it's just like, oh, they're so bad, they're so bad. And they didn't do nothing. Exactly. But in the comic books, three issue arc was awesome. That's right. So there's a killer known as the Seattle Slasher on the loose. Um, Oliver has letting it got to the 18th victim. Just going to say that. Now, this is during the time where they moved to Seattle. But let's this is more graphic, more mature, Green Arrow, than we were used to. Yeah, wasn't this like when they, like, like the modernization of Green Arrow, basically? Yeah, it, it's Mike Grill. Um, it's from August 1987. Uh, he did the artwork on this, too, so there was, like, really no um, nobody to stop him from doing what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, basically, three-issue prestige format, yes. Exactly. Not to be confused with the new prestige format. <laughs> no, not the giant, uh, yeah. Yeah. Giant size. <laughs> so, yep, we see Oliver and Dina uh, unpacking, and they're about to open up Sherwood Flores, Dina's flower shop, and I'm just like, <laughs> the feels of what could have been for the Green Arrow TV show. Like, just <laughs> so many, so many feelings right now. Then suddenly the 17-year-old girl crashes through the door, high on crack, as you do, I guess. <laughs> what is this, season one? Oliver and Dina, uh, Vertigo, yeah. Um, Oliver and Dina get, get her some help and discover the girl may have a lead on the cocaine trade. And I'm like, I don't think that's how that works, but sure. Um, and Dina decides that she'll work on that case by herself. And you're just like, oh crap, is Black Canary about to die? I know. <laughs> like, mm, I don't know about this one. Um, 19, so, 1987, we need some man paint. Exactly. And where's the nearest refrigerator? Uh, oh, this is pre-fridge. I know. Um, Oliver is like kind of sad that his days of, you know, it's over because of his inning. You know, he's old. And then, you know, Roy had a daughter. So that basically makes him a granddad. And I'm like, yeah, you're a gilf, bro. Deal with it. Oh my lord, if you look on the Wikipedia, it says he's 43 in this story. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, a little too, too close to home, huh? Too close. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so, to, uh, basically, despite his feelings, Dina's like, I'm gonna put on my old black canary costume, but I'm chicka wow wow. The only thing that stays on is that wig, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Google it if you don't know what it is. Oh, um, anyway, they make love, and then um, Oliver proposes, but Dina seems kind of hesitant, and he's just like, you know, I feel old, and I want children of my own, and Dina's like, bro, no. Think about what you're saying. 
Not the life we lead. We're two vigilantes. Hello. Hello, Megan. (laughs) Crackheads are crashing through our windows. I don't think so. Exactly. Elsewhere, the Seattle slasher strikes again. (laughs) Yikes. So, it's Oliver's birthday, and, you know, Dina has gifted him a new redesigned costume. And uh, so he hits the streets to investigate. He stops a mugging and he questions the thugs and, you know, he follows some leads to what he thinks the killer's hideout. And he finds those stupid news clippings um, that suggest that the killer is a, wow, Vietnam veteran. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is a dated reference. <laughs> yeah, I would feel too old, Ali. <laughs> um, as he investigates, the killer returns and knocks him to the floor and sets the building on fire. Burn it with fire. Yes, kill it with fire. Um, and then Ali recovers and attempts to track the killer before he strikes again. And there seems like there's a link between the killer and several assassinations of political figures. Ooh, a conspiracy. <laughs> Sorry. As Oliver, uh, like, kind of closes on the killer, he becomes witness to the killer's own murderer, a mysterious female archer. Someone standing in the shadows? <laughs> So then, um, yeah. The next day, the newspaper headline suggests there is a Robin Hood killer on the loose. Wow. <laughs> and that the killer's intended victim, though saved, was murdered anyway by her pimp. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> okay. Limp. There's no answers. And it seems like the slasher's killings have stopped. Mm-hmm. Um... So yeah, I want to mention that yeah, you can, I think uh, the longbow hunters is actually getting harder and harder and harder to find as a collected trade, but you can get it in um, Green Arrow, Black Canary, for better or for worse. I know that's actually a little bit more better in circulation. Mm-hmm. And then there's also oh a little trivia. There's a grave mark for uh, Bill Willingham, and another is marked Ray Gun oh, in man. the graves. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it was just like Reagan. Gun with two ends, though, you know, not to make it so obvious. Bill Willingham, wow. I forget why that's important. Was it like creators or? Uh, give my brain a second. I don't know. I don't remember. It might have been like an artist or something. Yeah, he's a writer. I don't really remember him, though, from anything. Unless he was, like, a 40s writer or something. Oh, wait, no! Batman and the Outsiders. Oh! He did did a little work on Justice League of America and Robin, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Oh, and right now he's actually working on a Vertigo property. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't really remember his Green Arrow stuff, but okay. (laughs) Um, So, cutting over to the second issue. <clears throat> Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Um, oh yes, book two, Dragon Hunt. This is um creepy. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Oh Lord, then there's there's mention of the Iranian arms fiasco. Ah uh, yes, where Jesse Jackson said, you really, "Oh no, that's not the one." <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> never mind. That's that's too soon. Oh. Too soon. Um, so yeah, Dragon Hunt is. See a Mr. Magnor, a Mr. Cronin, and a Mr. Osborne arguing. Okay. <laughs> what? Um. So Osborne leaves in frustration, and then like the Magnor dude reveals that several of their associates have been killed with a black arrow, meaning their past has come back to haunt them. And then as soon as Mr. Cronin leaves, he too is killed by a black arrow from the bow of a mysterious female archer. Now, I will say, despite them killing her, spoilers on Arrow, Shadow is, like, a better... I like Arrow's version of Shadow way better. Oh, yeah. Hashtag not rapey. That's all I'm saying. Oh, true. True. (laughs) Well, maybe this is why they made Black Canary leave. Hmm. Hmm. It all starts to come together now. Because of the... There can only be one female character to focus on at a time in a comic book. Unless it's Birds of Prey. In 1987, yeah. Yeah. So elsewhere, we see Green Arrow um, trying to tip off the police. Um, He's providing evidence that the killer might be a woman. 
And then it's like, oh, there must be a military connection between the victims. And then the police are like, eh, we're not sure the Seattle Slasher's dead. Oliver's super annoyed when he leaves. And then he gets that tip about Conan's murder or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he returns home and, you know, Dina's back. You know, well, he finds that she's left to investigate leaving the cocaine trade that we talked about previous issue. And he's like, I'm all alone. And then he gets like that little, oh, she rejected my marriage proposal. She doesn't want kids. Wait a minute. Am I Black Canary? No. Yikes. This is like hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Before returning uh, to his investigation in the morning, Oliver does check up on Dina, but thinks better of revealing his presence. And then as Green Arrow, he kind of um, comes face to face with the killer herself. I'm like, okay. He threatens her with his bow. Hey oh. But she can see in his eyes that he isn't a killer. I'm like, ah! Just give it one more issue, I guess. Give it um, time. She fires an arrow past his head and he attempts to subdue her, but, you know, she she is really great at what she does. And I'm like, who is this lady? Shiva? Oh. Um, yeah. And then, you know, it, that arrow actually was meant for some uh, a real target. It was the man on the street. But so. She still kills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oliver, you're useless. You're old and useless. Get out of here. Bring <laughs> us Connor. I kid. Um, while recovering at home, Oliver overhears that newscast that the man he saw Dina with earlier had been found dead in a dumpster. Um, he investigates and then, like, talks to that bartender and he's like that man had connections with Magnor Magnor shipping you don't say Magnor um so uh, Green Arrow goes stakes out Magnor's place and then he hears that Magnor's men are responsible for the drug dealer's death he uh, also discovers where the man he believes has kidnapped Dina is hiding so yeah Dina's being held and tortured in a warehouse by a man named Jankowski yep Put that under your cap. That's going to come back. <laughs> Oliver soon discovers them. And uh, yeah, just as uh, Jankowski is about to do some serious damage, arrow flies straight to his chest. Oliver rescues Dina and he notices the mysterious woman who now has a name, Shadow, otherwise known as the Robin Hood killer, is fighting alongside him. And of course, in true comic book fashion, the warehouse explodes. Of course. Um... She apologizes for missing his birthday as Shadow walks away. Like, okay. Okay. So that happened. <laughs> okay. Dragon Hunt. Doesn't really. Okay. It's fine, I guess, because of her tattoo. I don't know. I don't know. I just. But yes, again, again this is like a uh, mature book, so you get some nudity, you get some. Uh, some fine. oversized proportions. <laughs> Well, blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay. Uh, number three, tracking snow. Um, I, I believe they're referring to the cocaine. <laughs> um, that, that's what makes the most sense here, right? Mhm. Um, so we see, you know, Green Arrow having nightmares about his recent events, with you know, that caused Dina to be tortured. And how he killed one of her captors in rage. And then in a dream, a dragon appears, saying that it and Green Arrow are one. What the hell was he smoking? I mean, this is before Seattle legalized marijuana. This is 87, so just saying. He's old. Maybe he's getting seen on him. Oh, wow. Oliver wakes up at Dina's side in the hospital where he is asked to meet with Lieutenant James Cameron. I repeat, Lieutenant James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> the person who should have directed Aquaman. No shade. No. Oh. <laughs> water. It's water. That's his thing. Hashtag still bitter. Moving on. Um... Cameron suspects a link between Dina and Green Arrow, but lets it drop. Instead, he starts sharing evidence that, um... The torturer Jankowski had been a military man, but he found a way to erase the record of it. And before leaving, he's like, there were two kinds of arrows fired at that scene. So I'm thinking there's two archers, but I can't prove it. Yikes. This guy's like a dog with a bone. Uh, Later, Oliver 
investigate the nature of the dragon tattoo he saw on Shadow's arm. A tattoo artist explains that the tattoo is related to the Yakuza. Mm-hmm. And Oliver infers that the tattoo was given to her as a child. I'm like, I don't think that's how the Yakuza works, but okay. Um, and flashback, it is shown that a young Shadow was trained by the Yakuza in archery in order to redeem her father's honor by killing the men who dishonored him. Child soldiers. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, Mr. Osborne grows impatient with Mr. Mag- Magnor, and it becomes clear that Mr. Osborne and the CRA are offering Mr. Magnor's drug operation. Oh, oh, I totally forgot about this part, where I was like, preach, true that, mm-hmm. yeah, and drugs, yes. Um, anyway, yeah, so they're getting full protection from the CIA for their dealings. Osborne warns that the stupid that they've been concerned about, uh, may have survived and is a danger to the operation. So, guess who they assigned to deal with her? Eddie! If you're a Daryl fan, you know! Season one, Eddie! Eddie fires! Um, Look. cut to, um, a street where Ollie is accosted by a homeless woman who claims that she has a message from Shadow. She gives him the information before wandering away, and it seems that unbeknownst to Oliver, the homeless woman was actually Shadow, and you're just like, bro, bro, I know you're blonde, but come on. <laughs> anyway, Oliver deduces that the numbers and letters he was given are actually coordinates. Bravo for you. And it's a location to a national park. Too bad it's not a mysterious island in the South Pacific. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, look, they're in the snow. <laughs> exactly. Um, he tracks Shadow until he finds her. Um, finds himself held at arrow point by her. Like, arrow point. <laughs> That's cute. She goes, they have some some common goals. And she's like, oh, I was wrong when I said you didn't have killer eyes. You totally do now. It's like, because he actually killed somebody? Yeah. <laughs> um, she also uh, reveals that the location will be soon used as a drop point for Mag- uh, Magnor and Osborne's deal. And she wants Magnor's life to restore her honor. Okay, sure, Shadow. Um, soon the helicopter carrying Osborne and Magnor arrive. Osborne seems nervous. Added that Fires is hiding somewhere with a sniper rifle, waiting for things to go wrong. I'm just like, as you do. <laughs> so this deal was kind of weird. It involves the trade of like what three hundred fifty thousand dollars in unmarked bills for a large amount of cocaine. It's like, okay, sure, why not? So then Osborne suggests this is the deal meant as a way for the CIA to encourage democracy in Central America. And I'm just like, bro, they're actually saying the thing while the thing was happening. <laughs> that was impossible. Watch Snowfall if you don't want to actually do any Google research on FX. This is actually the story about this behind what they're talking about. But it, it, it's said in a very sad way. And I'm just like, yes, shade the hell out of it. Yes, thank you. No. Um, Ollie does see Friars aiming at Shadow, and um, Fires is shot into the sniper's arm, and then, you know, Fires' weapon goes off, and it, like, blows the whole deal into chaos, and Magnor actually manages to escape in one of the helicopters, but as the other helicopter kind of escapes, which is, like, one of my favorite panels, uh, Ollie ambushes it, and it, like, explodes, and just, like, of course. It's like, every time an explosion happens, take a drink! (laughs) You'd be so drunk right now. The 80s. So yeah, and then afterwards Oliver confronts Osborne as he's like pouring the cocaine into a river and I'm like, what? You're gonna get all the all the fish high, man? Talk about flying fish eggs, bro. Like, jeez. Um, I guess you have to be a sushi lover to understand that reference. Sorry. Um, so yeah, Oliver kind of accuses Osborne and the CIA of conspiring with drug dealers and it's just like, wait a minute, is Green Arrow getting political? Again? <laughs> I mean, I like it when it gets political, but whatever. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what else happens? Osborne just gives him the money. He's like, here you go. Ah, yes, the Contras. The Nicaraguan Contras. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so. He drops that bag of money in his feet. And then rather than escape with the money, it's just like, okay. He, he, yeah, you can't be implicated. We get you. We got you. You're good, Green Arrow. <laughs> Like, uh, well, he doesn't have money at this particular time, so I thought they were going somewhere else with that, but they they didn't. So, cut to that night, Green Arrow visits Magnor, and he's like, you know, he and his associate had a 
had a uh, you know had run a Japanese American internment camp where they interrogated Shadow's father. They tortured his wife in order out in order to find the location of some gold bullion. And I'm like, wait a minute. I feel like Arrow should have used this story. They kind of sort of did, but they kind of messed it up. Mm-hmm. So the gold bullion was actually given to them by the Yakuza, so they found it and split it between them themselves. I was just like, oh, it's all it comes down to money, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So Magma thinks he's safe, but um, the visit was actually a distraction, and Oliver stands by as Shadow kills him, her last victim, with an arrow. I'm like, well, that got dark. Yep. Later, Just to serve. Exactly. Ice cold, apparently. Um, later, we see him go back to Dina's hospital room. He apologizes for being upset that she didn't want children. children, and he's like, I totally understand now. But they still want a safer world, which would be safe for them to have children together. So then he reveals that he did keep the money. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, okay, I can get behind this green arrow, no problem. All right, Mike Grill, you got my attention, homie. <laughs> so yeah, that that's Longbow Hunters in a nutshell. Um, it really did. Um, the 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 quote that most people uh think of from this actual three uh issue arc is the one about him being a hunter. Mm-hmm. Uh, shoot. Let me find the exact quote. But I mean, uh-huh. it, it, you know, the modernization of Green Arrow is a much more modern, you know, realistic take. I wouldn't say realistic, but yeah. Well, okay, here, here's here's the, the, here's the quote. Stuff. But I'm a hunter. That's the one thing I learned on that island. The one thing I'm really good at. That's what I forgot. The basics, and that basically is the crux of what my girl was trying to do. Get back to basics. Make it more relatable. Make no. it not so Robin Hoody. No trick arrows. Yeah, which I don't have a problem with. If Batman can still have battle ranks in 2019, Green Arrow can still have a boxing level. Fight yeah. me. <laughs> I mean, the battle ranks are kind of tired at this point. I'm just saying. Nope. That's the classic. You don't have to use it all the time, is my point. <laughs> Right. Well, at least they did get kind of rid of like the the you know the green arrow car or the green the, the arrow cave and all that stuff. So and like that stupid hat and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they gave him a hoodie. <laughs> yes. Um, but I did love the move to Seattle, which was like for the touch of realism. I actually love that, and I love the Sherwood Forest shop. I love the Black Canary relationship. Um, I think my girl actually handled it the best out of a, um well second to or like in the top three best. He kind of understood that relationship and how important it was and how they were equals and things like that. And I just <sighs> fast forward to today and some people could really take a lesson. <laughs> but yeah, then it set up with it set up by uh, girls 80 issue run of I did. I thought I, I could have swore it. I guess it wasn't called Green Arrow back in the 40s or whatever, but the f- set up yeah, the more, f- more fun comics. Yeah, the first ever Green Arrow ongoing series. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, that 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 was huge for Green Arrow. He, he really had a moment that I, I heard it was like a really at that time it was like a really big deal and it actually did pretty well. Mhm. But the world just wasn't ready for Green Batman. They just weren't ready yet. But Honestly, it, it took I think it took until Justice League the cartoon for people to really like. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. I don't know if it's just the timing, too, because this came out in 87, then, like, two years later, you know, Batman that gets a... Like I said, the world wasn't ready for Green Batman just yet. And, and, it was, yeah, and again, it was a more mature book, so it's like you really couldn't be giving this to ki- a lot of kids and stuff. And Yeah. Which, honestly, I think they knew where their bread was buttered back in the 80s a lot more than they do right now. Like, everybody's like, oh, the, the youth don't want that. They want trolls and snapchat they're not you know what i mean yeah they want exactly. their sexy fanfic on wattpad like they're not it is what it is like i said if marvel gave me mephisto is actually uncle ben the whole time by dc by archie comics it's marvel all day every day wow the thing dc could do for me is i don't even know at this point they, they could fire business and i still wouldn't care at this point Whoa! Like it's a little too, little too late. I, I, I stick with the classics, thanks. Bendis, <laughs> Bendis, Bendis. But 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 I will say I do love DC's TV universes. I I love the DC uh universe TV shows, and I love the Arrowverse shows. Uh, so that's excellent. something they're getting right. 
Can't wait for that crossover. The the crossover to end all crossovers. Nobody else is ever going to be this ambitious. Even Dick Wolf couldn't be this ambitious if he wanted to. Dun, dun. I mean, you have, like, what, Chicago Fire, Chicago uh, PD, and the other one. It's like, yeah, you, you get a whole night. Well, we're giving you five damn hours. Have fun, kids. <laughs> It's going to be its own DVD at this point, probably. <laughs> oh, did you see? I guess uh, Law & Order SVU now has their own podcast. Really? Yeah. Like, just is Marushka so- Harlan Tay behind this? Uh, well, I don't think. Is I mean, it, it's Is it like the show creators do, talking about the episodes, or is it just like random people? Or I forget who they said, but it's a behind-the-scenes guy host. They but- got much to do it. Oh, what? they didn't get freaking Richard Belter to do it. Well, no. Yeah, they, they do do interviews, though. Like, Mariska was in the first episode. Of and there's that's like the an, person everybody knows. <laughs> well, I think they interview all the like the main the main cast eventually. I I started it. I, I'm not through it yet. But I think they interview all the cast, and they, like, talk to them. Like, is it just SVU, or is it, the, like, the whole Law & Order franchise? No, it's just SVU, because it just started this season, because I guess they drop an episode after each TV episode drops. Oh. Because I yeah, because on the first episode they're like, you know, don't listen to this before you uh watch the season premiere. Hmm. I don't know, man. Call me when they get uh, call me when they get Stabler, Chris, Chris Elliott on, um, uh, Maloney, Chris Elliott. <laughs> 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 what? I the only know. person I care about. Sorry, it. <laughs> Come on, Marvel. Come on, DC. We'll ju- we'll drop a podcast every after every issue you publish. Come Bro, on. Bro, that meant I could, I would probably be a lot nicer if I could see the like. I think my problem is that I don't have a lot of time to really like digest the episodes like I used to when it was just yeah. Arrow. Like mm-hmm. I used to be able to watch it like two or three times, really break stuff down, yeah. really care. But it's like so many other shows I got to get to. Sorry, I was like I only catch like one Easter egg. <laughs> Oh, yeah, back at Arrow Season 1 and 2, yeah, it's just like you could just watch one over and I digested week. it and digested it. Now, now it's like, okay, we've got five more shows coming. Move along. It's like, okay, Supergirl, Batwoman, Black Lightning, Flash, and now Arrow. <laughs> and don't forget Legends <laughs> whenever they come on. Okay. But, yeah, no. I, I really – I don't know. Like, the first time that I read it, I was just like, because I'd read the more stuff after Girl before I actually read this. Yeah. I think I ended up doing Green Arrow Year One before I read this, and I actually don't like Year One, and I didn't like this at first either. But then, like, I don't know, it grew on me. Like as they like kind of started to like really mess up Green Arrow, the more that I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. And then I started seeing like all the good in it, like the relationship aspect, and really diving into who Oliver is as a person, especially without his, his money and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I think I was like you. I. I started picking it up around the, you know, when Kevin Smith started. So I, like, oh, I went back. I got some of the Grell stuff. I got some of the Connor Hawk stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I grabbed this and I was like, Hey, yeah. Connor Hawk and the Justice League is not that bad. It actually isn't that bad. Oh yeah, taking down the key. <laughs> but yeah, no, I like I read some of the other Grell stuff and then I came back and read this and I was like, okay, okay, I see where he was going. Yeah, exactly. It, you need a little perspective and like distance, I think, to really appreciate this. Yeah. But I like a lot of Grell's other work, so it's kind of weird that it, initially I didn't really, like, care for it. Because I, I, like, I'm a fan of the Robin Hood look, I think, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I said, Hard Heart Traveling Heroes is, like, absolutely my number one favorite Green Arrow thing ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just, like, you know, literally a so- social justice warrior, like, literally. <laughs> Green Arrow did it first. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So it's, like, really hard to top. Which we'll get to eventually one day, probably. Yes, we will. So, yeah, that's, that's all you need to know, really, about modern day Green Arrow. <laughs> yeah, read this. It'll catch up real quick. Yeah, I mean, we've done other stuff. We did the Kevin Smith run. We did... um That New 52. Uh, yeah. Was that the Longbow Hunters, too? <laughs> Basically, it kind of was, but, like, not yeah. really. Not really. <laughs> no, New 52 version, yeah. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody knows New 52 doesn't count. Even 50, even DC knows New 52 doesn't count. So, oh wait, one quick random nonsense bit, and then we can get out of here. So, I heard that CW is developing an Arrowverse show that is not a spinoff. So, no. it's not the Superman show because technically that's the spinoff. 
So I'm just like, why are we doubling down on all the Arrowverse shows? So wait, they're doing a show that's not a spinoff? Yes, I can't think of what it would be. Yeah, because basically, you know, anything Flash, Batman, wait, Flash, Batman, Superman, Green Arrow would be a spinoff. We already have Black Lightning. Are going to do Blue Beetle? Booster oh. Gold? Ooh, Blue and Gold, yeah. Yeah. I think that, and I feel like that's what they should be doing, but I think, I think they, they should save that for HBO Max because it needs a budget. Yeah. I mean, unless they de- decided they're not doing a movie or it's not going to HBO Max, so I think, I don't know, I think the Arrow versus, you know, these it's, creeps. It's full. It's it's full, homie. Well, <laughs> Well, like I, plus I really think Black Lightning might be going away, as sad as I am to say. So if Black Lightning goes away, who know who knows how much longer Lightning. And I, I I hear I keep hearing rumblings about Supergirl not making it. I'm like they're gonna give it a season seven, whether it's a shortened season six and seven. She's getting a season seven. Hashtag deal with it at this point. I mean, oh, wait, has she had her hundredth episode yet? <sighs> She's in season five, right? So technically, she should be around there. It should be getting close, because, yeah, it wasn't The Flash's 100th episode in uh season 5. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be coming up. I mean, they're, they're still going to count that, that CBS season, right? Well, yeah, that, that's why it's season 5. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Oh, yeah, I don't know. And, and I I'm, hope they do something special. And, I mean, who, I mean, you're talking about space, I mean, who knows how much longer Legends is going to go, because Brandon's leaving. Oof, Yeah. Well, and that that was budget effects heavy. I think that came too soon. I think that would have actually been way better as not a spinoff of the Arrow universe, you know what I mean? And it's whole thing on like DC Universe or HBO Max because they definitely yeah. need some budget. And you probably could have, doesn't have. And you could have pulled more from the greater DC universe too, character. Exactly. And I was just, I was so bummed. I was like, wait, Wave Riders the ship? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so confused right now. Nineties kid. She's like, no. But anyway, yeah, I just I just wanted to float that rumor on what you think. They, I, like I said, I would be down for Blue Beetle and Blue, or Booster Gold or Blue Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Oh, yeah, do both. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, I would love to see that Wonder Woman show that they wrote a script for, but never. I don't even think it shot the pilot. It's called Amazon. It was, like, actually really good. It was, like, way better than that thing David A. E. Kelly did. No offense. I love Adrian Padalecki, uh, Pilecki, but... Not as Wonder Woman. Mockingbird, totally. Not as Wonder Woman. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so I'm just I'm just saying, I, I think it's room now for a Wonder Woman TV show. If Supergirl yeah, just, goes away. I just wonder if it's something Blue Beetle, whether it's Booster Gold with him or not. Because, I mean, this season I of The Flash... I feel like Flash, Blue Beetle is definitely this, might be it. This season of The Flash, they threw out the name Ted Kord again, so... Yeah, Kord Industries is kind of making a comeback. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'd be interested in that. Let did, us know. Send us some emails what you think. Yes, send us feedback. But uh oh, my my last random thing of random nonsense. Did you I really didn't take a look at it that supposedly DC leaked their new timeline? Yeah, I didn't look at it yet either. It's like <laughs> I don't Sure as all interested we are. It's a shame too. Like y'all know how big a DC fan I I, I mean I'm still a DC fan, don't get me wrong, but like there's not a lot holding there's no, my stack is getting smaller and smaller by the week. And then they're just like talking about, you know, replacing all, you know, in their characters with new, you know, like, you know, we're getting Black Batman and. Which and we I, already have in other universe. Like, if you want to, like, develop those characters that we actually have instead of just, like, making something new, I'm, I'm down for that. But don't just plop them in. It's lazy. Like, I like, like, the, I like how they did Naomi, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, give me something like that where, you know, she actually, like, blends in, she meets them, and it's not like a instantaneous, oh, you're in, you're out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and again, it's like, I, I think they said Green Arrow's gonna be, like, an original new character, and I'm just like, why? You have so many Green Lanterns, why are you creating another one? All the humans! <laughs> I know, and it's gonna be Maybe like... Maybe they'll a- give us an Asian Green Lantern, and that'll be an excuse for it. I don't know. We, we haven't had an Asian Green Lantern. And, you know, Asian Atlas is actually doing pretty good. I'm just saying. No, yeah, true, true. So, but, uh, I mean, if there's a reason for it. Make, it. make make it an Asian woman, because, I mean, all the human Green Lanterns no. have one woman. Jessica Cruz ruined it for everybody. I'm sorry. Them is the rule. <laughs> That's the woman saying that, people. So, unless a female is going to write it. I don't. Oh, <gasps> now the. Kelly the, Thompson is busy, damn it. Leave her Gail, alone. Gail Simone. <laughs> She's busy too. Yeah, true. So busy. There's more female writers out there. 
either, though. <laughs> I mean, you got Amanda Connors, but... Yeah, I mean, we had the who uh, the Bensons right in, uh, was it Bad Girl and the Birds of Prey? Or? Yeah. I mean, they're out there, but, uh, you know. They bring you in. You gotta have that, 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 that name, that, that marquee name, you know. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they bring in, like, uh, novelists and stuff. or. Yeah, true. So, yeah, we're gonna let you guys go. Because <laughs> we're just so random right now. So, yes, because Lil, it's like, come on, Phil, shut up. <laughs> Saturday. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I got to drink. All right. Sleep. <laughs> we will let Lilith go. All right. So next week, we're here. Wade's World here. We're continuing uh, that uh, good, bad, and ugly run. And then the week after that, we'll be talking Green Arrow 81 through 89 from 1994. Comic Capers 68, the last episode of Comic Capers for 2019. And then God Rest Your Souls, episode 69, In first January. episode of 2020. Lilith's, Lilith's pick. <laughs> <laughs> Lilith gets to pick our 69. <sighs> <sighs> so anyway, so yeah, so send us your thoughts on the Longbow Hunters. Send us your thoughts on uh, that upcoming Green Arrow issues we're talking about. Hey, send in your requests. Uh, email us, Capes and Lunatics at... Hell, send us your thoughts on the Crisis on Infinite Earths because we know we're going to cover, you know, we know we're covering Arrowverse too. So send your thoughts, Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Call our voicemail, 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 Capes. And remember to follow all the Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics sidekick social media links at Linktree. That's L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. All right. And killers, the killer Lil Hellfire with her Yakuza tattoo. <laughs> Where can people find you? Oh, if you nerds want to hail me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Hellfire. And if you're on the gram and you listen to this podcast, Cape Saloon Ticks or Cape Saloon Ticks Sidekicks, you know, both is good. You can find me at Lil Hellfire69. Fight me, nerd. Okay, fight me. All right. Switching it up. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So, again, thank you for joining us. Wonder why we're covering some Green Arrow stuff. <laughs> Five, it's season eight, the final season. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, I forgot. Uh, did you see they? Uh, they did say Emily yeah, Beth be back, back for the series finale. I know. Yeah, finale. I mean, who knows? Maybe they already shot it. <laughs> that her scene. Oh, come on, Lilith. She was a part of the show the, almost since the beginning. No. It's not as bad as the show. Come on, it'll be good. All right. Come back next time. Don't feel this city or this podcast? Or you'll get a black arrow on the heart.